I want young black black people in general, but especially young black men, like I want them to see from me, no matter what size you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done. You don't have to live a certain life to be be confident in who you are. And I think, you know, me just walking in every room like that, I'm representing for the kid who wasn't necessarily confident in himself. Because I wasn't always this confident. Yo, what's going down, man? It's 704's finest, Third World Zone, Rock Nation's own Jamla Records. Boy, Ruben Vincent. The city, they know I'm the humble beast. You might have seen me at the BT Hip Hop Awards site for last year. And you might have seen me on the Dreamville Fest going crazy. And I'm here with my girl, Nala Simone, at We Need to Talk. Talk to me. What's up, guys? Nala Simone here from We Need to Talk. As you know, we drop two interviews a week, each and every Monday and each and every Thursday. Brand new exclusive content from your favorite celebrities, influencers, whoever. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with everything that we have going on. And make sure you guys just share, tell a friend to tell a friend, drop a comment, show your girl some love, all right? Say, say you got some shit coming? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's the outro for sure. I love that. Yeah. All right, let's get into this interview. Gotta make niggas cry one time. Cry? Niggas gonna be crying. Should you do the other last project? I know. I'm not. Well, that's the point. Everybody, like the other <laughs> like, songs, niggas is. Ha I'm having fun. You know what I'm saying? I got songs for the girls. I'm having fun. I got the Afrobeat shit. But you know, I gotta put the the, the tearjerker in there the one time. You know what I'm saying? The song cry. Yeah. Not mad at it. We good, Matt? But I'm done making niggas cry. I'm trying to have fun now. I, I feel like you can't even help it. I know. Another person <laughs> I was talking to about you. Was like that nigga just so deep on accident. And you just yeah. try to have a regular conversation. And the next thing you know is a deep ass combo. That's true. <laughs> I don't even be trying. I'll be, I'll say some shit and nigga be like, damn. And then the conversation just go into a loophole. But I don't, I don't know why is that. I don't know. Maybe I'm just super introspective, just on in general as a person. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it at all. What's going on, guys? It's Nyla Simone, and we are back with another episode of We Need to Talk, and I have one of my good friends in the building. Ruben Vincent is here. Yeah, you know what it is, man. Martin Luther King, Ruth Vandross, Mr. Yeah. First Two Names, Ruben Vince Carter dunking on somebody's daughter. Whoa. Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. This, <laughs> The dunking on somebody's daughter shit? When did that come into play? When I was, I, that actually came, I came over there when I was 15, so it was like my childish days. No. But I still keep it in, in the arsenal. Yeah, I see for flavor, <laughs> huh? I'm like, oh, I was with you up until that one. All right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Rube, how are you? I'm blessed, man. I'm having a great time. Yeah. I'm having a great time. Life is good right now. I love that. Yeah. I love that for you. I just seen you do a Hip Hop 50th panel. Yes. At the Brooklyn Library. Mm-hmm. That was super dope. Tell me about that. Man, it was dope. Uh, We had, you know, Night in the Library. You know, a lot of legends was in there. You know, Rhapsody was there, Misa Hilton, Smith & Wesson. Um, Mama me, Carter. Yeah, exactly. Mama Carter, Angie Martinez. And everybody was doing different panels, KRS-One, which was like a full circle moment because when I was 17, I opened for KRS-One in, like, North Carolina. Oh, wow. And, you know, it was packed out. Like, I was, like, I ain't gonna lie, I was surprised, but it was packed out. And his breath control is crazy. And I remember after I performed, he was like, yo, you you a young legend. Like, I, I see it. And so when I saw him, he was like, yeah, I remember you. You know what I'm saying? So, anyways, had a panel with Sean C. and Topaz Jones. We are talking about the future of hip-hop. And, you know what I mean? I played some new music. We talked about what the future holds like and... You know, it was lit. It was a vibe. This is, I guess, kind of topical, but I know you guys are talking about the, the future of hip-hop, and it's been trending all over social media that hip-hop doesn't have a number one for the first time right. since 1993. Right. How do you feel about that? Do you care? Are you bothered? you think it's coming? Like 1993 is 2023. That is, what, 30 years, right? Yeah. So it's it's a transitional stage, I feel like. I mean, you know... You always gonna have your ups and downs, and I feel like right now, the game is trying to adjust to a new rule book, a handbook. Like you know what I'm saying? Like, just as much as you can be an artist, you have to be a content creator. And if your content isn't mad, like you can have the best music in the world, but if your content isn't here with that, it doesn't pierce through. And especially we live in a social media time where everybody's just scrolling; they want to see what you got in 30 seconds, in one minute. You know what I mean? So 
it's we're it's it's not it's not what we want, but especially me as an artist. Like I want to just make music and people feel it and be like, this is incredible. But we in a game now where it's like you gotta adjust, and I think the hip hop in a in in general is adjusting, and not even just on the content side, but I think just the the content of the music, you know what I'm saying, and what is being put out, what is being poured, like. I, it just sound like just from my observation on social media, people getting tired of the same stuff. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you gotta adjust, or you are gonna fall to the wayside. And and for the next generation, you're not gonna be in the topics no more. And you know, I just feel like because we in a weird space, that means a new regime is coming. And there's so many young talented artists right now that's kind of you know figuring out their way. So I feel like once you know, the game finally adjusts to what's going on and we, we kind of put pouring ourselves into the, in the right way, you know, it sky's the limit. Yeah, do you think that, because I was just arguing with these guys about it, because they're like, we love the day in the life, like, you showed us everything. And I'm like, yo, that was so exhausting. I did it on purpose just to show people, like, how much I do, because I feel like people don't really understand what you do and, right. unless you take a picture or you video. Right. But it's exhausting. So Definitely. Do you feel like that is ever going to, like... I guess a sense like go away. It's only gonna get worse. Technology is and quicker now. It's getting quicker and quicker by the day where there's new technologies. And I hate to say it, I don't want to say this. And this is something even me and my manager have had conversations about. And I've tried to like be like, nah, nah, nah. Like, you know what I'm saying? But just accepting what it is, new technology is always gonna be there. There they're gonna be more stuff just like this where they're going to figure out new ways to keep people reeled into their phones. And, you know, you see the the the, the Apple thing where they got the little, um, the, it's not it's not VR, but it's like, it is kind of like VR. I forgot the name of it, but it's, you ain't seen, you ain't seen that yet? I don't think so. It's a commercial and they got like, you you can like watch TV, you can FaceTime people, but it's on your, yeah, it's, it's on getting, your what? it's on like your, your face. Yeah, and people going to be walking around. You can, if you don't want to be at your house and you want to just remove yourself from where you at, you can pretend you in a beach and you can turn. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah, it's going to be. That's scary. Exactly. So it's like, like that episode of Black Mirror. You see exactly, that? Yo, exactly. That's scary. So it's only going to get worse. And I hate to say it. It's just everything is going to have its goods and bads. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just about learning how to use it as a tool instead of something that's going to be able to use you. Yeah. Consume you. Yeah. And it is exhausting because even me, I have problem with, you know, content and like filming and stuff because I'll be having my life is lit, I feel like. But it's like I don't be pulling out my phone all the time to and record like, everything. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like you said, we in an age where people want to see that and the artist is more accessible now. But then I feel like it also is bringing down the value in the artist. Understood. I, I feel like because you're from Carolina and you're not always on the scene. Yeah. That helps keep like. Oh yeah, you know, like a mystique is type. Thing. Oh yes, yeah. yes, I love it, and that's I, on purpose. Yes, you don't want to move. See, and it's funny was I was just having this conversation yesterday. Like, I do want to move sometimes. Like, I do think about it. Like, but I kind of like that I get to come to New York and be in the scene, and then go back home, and I can be away, and it just keeps me tapped into the music too, even yeah. more. Like, and that's what I grew up on, especially. You know, coming from the camp I came from, it's like, yeah, Rap City and Knife and them, they'll go to L.A. And then they'll come back home and just be locked in on the music. So it's like being from North Carolina and being out the way is like a blessing. But then it's like sometimes I do be missing where it's like they might be an event that I should pop out to. But I'm all the way in North Carolina. It's in L.A. You know what I'm saying? But I like the fact that I can go to L.A., get my rounds off, and then go home and be calm. Yo, I feel like the camp that you guys are building in, in Carolina, though, like the squad is stacking up very, very nicely. Oh, for over sure, there. for sure. North like, Carolina, period, for yeah. sure. Wait, North Carolina, period. I think so. I think so. Like I think Charlotte is on a is having a renaissance right now. Like it, it's emerging because we got we got me, we got Mavi. You know, obviously Luke from Dreamville has been going crazy. Obviously the baby, you know, he's from Charlotte. Yeah. But it's like Charlotte is starting to like ten years ago, fifteen years ago. I we couldn't have this conversation. Yeah, at all. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. For us to be building and even just other people out of North Carolina and stuff like that, like, you know, obviously, like, the raps, the nice, but then you got the the mores and all of that. You know oh, what yeah, I'm saying? Oh, yeah, mores. Yeah. So it's like, for me, I, I'm just seeing a reassurance and I'm seeing a renaissance that I think is going to be dope in, like, 10 years from now. Just to see where everybody goes. I for sure know 
I know where I'm going to be. I know where Mavi going to be. I know where Luke going to be. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just seeing where all of that is about to go is, is beautiful. Do you guys see, like, Carolina having, like, its own industry? Like, I feel like in the DMV, we don't really have, like, an industry. Like, you got to go right. to New York to do what you want to do, or you got to move to L.A., and, you know, you're saying how you go and travel to it. But because you guys are starting to have a lot of household names, do you see that being a thing? Yes. And even I thinking of other names, Tia Corinne, Tusi. She's from Carolina. Yeah, Tia yeah, Corinne? She's from, yeah, she's from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's like we it, – it's definitely brewing. And, and shout out to Arnold Taylor because he's doing something yeah. incredible with South Coast, man. Like, I think, you know, him building that in North Carolina and being able to break through artists like the baby, break through artists like Tusi, break through Tia. Yeah. Like, I think – that is showing that North Carolina can have an industry there. And we just need more. We just need to have more resources. And we just need to kind of, like, put our arms around each other. You know what I'm saying? And kind of, like, you know, continue to walk into this light. And I think, you know, we can get there. I think we can get to a point where we can be like in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take some time because Atlanta done built their repertoire from, yeah. from, years. from yeah, yeah, from all the way, like, 30 years ago where, you know what I'm saying? So it's like we're just now starting. But I feel like years from now it's going to get to that point. I've only it, where's the is Dreamville Festival in? It's in Raleigh. It's yeah, in Raleigh. you haven't been to Charlotte for real yet. Yeah, I don't think I've been to Charlotte. Charlotte is growing, and and that and Charlotte is one of the like I feel like it's one of the growing cities in North Carolina. I'm not North Carolina, America. Period. Right now, mm -hmm. like it's a lot of people coming from New York. You can get a house even just in North Carolina. Period. You can get a house. A house might be an M in L. A. But you can go to North Carolina. It might be two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand. So real estate, really, I'm for everybody watching, game, get some real estate in North Carolina if you want. If you got the bread, invest in the real estate now because the value is just going to continue to go up. Interesting. This is my last thing, and then I'll pivot to your music. But in comparison to Atlanta, you know, what's really special and dope about Atlanta is that there's so many, like, black entrepreneurs, black-owned businesses. Like, there's, like, a whole black ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So, like... No matter what's going on in the politics or in the world, Atlanta going to be Atlanta. You know right. what I mean? Like, does Carolina have that also? Or does Charlotte in particular have that? I've read somewhere that, you know, North Carolina in general is one of the places where a lot of black people are prospering. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Just business-wise, Charlotte and Raleigh. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's just more so it being more magnified, it being more, you know, amplified and being more light on it. You know what I'm saying? And I think... As we are building, is going to get to that point. And it's still, you know what I'm saying? We still not taking baby steps. Like, Atlanta done built it up. You know what I'm saying? But I think the the names that I've spoken, the Arnold Taylors of the world, the Two Seas, the Tias, the, the Babies, the Mavis, the Loops, me, like, we have an opportunity to be those young black entrepreneurs, musicians that can pour back into our city. Yeah. And, and wherever we from and bring that type of, you know, Attention yeah. to North Carolina. Yeah, I think it's, it's definitely happening. So between that, I know you're from Carolina, but I also know you're a Liberian. Yes. And you stand very strong on that. Yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah. <laughs> Shout out all my LIB folks, man. And I had the luxury of hearing some of your upcoming music when we was at the Brooklyn Museum. Yeah. At Brooklyn Library, sorry. And it was like Afrobeat-infused hip-hop. Yeah insane yeah so what what like triggered you to be like you know what i want to take this route it's funny because it's always been in the back of my mind mm -hmm. even before i met knife even before i you know signed to the rock i always because me and my cousin like the the, the jack the jacket i got on this is my crew back home it's called third world and me and my cousin had this name from when i was eight years old he's older than me he's like 10 years older than me but um we've We've always thought, like, yo, we got to bring it back to Liberia. And he used to always, like, put it in my ear, like, yo, you got to tap in, like, with your, your, the African roots. And I've always would listen, but I had strategically wanted to solidify myself as an MC first. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, man, like, when he would tell me, I'll be like, you're right, but let me, like, you know, I wanted to get in the game, let people know I can spit, let people know I come from that culture. And then bring them into the world of hip hop and, you know, fusing it with the Afro stuff, you know, African stuff. So um, it's always been in the back of my mind. I just felt like now was the time. And it was it was dope because I feel like it was perfect timing because the world is embracing Africa right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? And 
one place that hasn't been fully embraced yet is Liberia. You know what I mean? Like, we have artists from Ghana. We have artists from Nigeria, South African artists. But there's nobody that... There is artists brewing in Liberia. Like, you know, uh, there's uh, MC Kato and, you know, some other people in Liberia that's just going crazy. But uh, there hasn't been nobody to break through, you know, like, worldly since, worldwide since. So I just felt like, you know... It was a perfect opportunity for me to kind of cut through like that. You know what I mean? Just is coming and not even on even like, oh, like I want everybody from every everywhere in Africa to win. But I feel like, you know, it was only right that I represent, especially while I'm on this platform. Like, you know, just as much as my dad played the Pox, the Bigs, the Nazis, he played all the African stuff. He played all like that's wake up Sunday, Saturday um, cleaning. He ain't playing no gospel or nothing he like that. Saturday cleaning. You feel me? Yes. Yeah, you come from that too, right? Yeah, yeah. No, because I, I was saying this to Fetro, I think, and he was like, it's not Saturday cleaning, it's Sunday cleaning. I'm like, nah, it's Saturday. It's Saturday cleaning. We go to church on Sunday. I, I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, Glad nah, Saturday, cl- Saturday cleaning, my dad, it was like, some days he would play rap, some days he would play gospel, but he was playing all the Afrobeat stuff too. Fire. So it was like, why? And I'm going to be real because, you know, we live in America. And when I was younger, just being real, like, they they were, like, even African-Americans wasn't embracing an African. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes. Not all. Yeah. Not all. They, yeah, they yeah, saying yeah, that. Yeah. I'm like, yo, I had met African friends. I never had a problem with them. Go ahead. Nah, facts. There were some people who embraced us, but some people didn't. So I feel like as a kid, I wasn't fully comfortable in embracing it. Tell and, me about it. And exactly. So in the DMV... <laughs> I didn't know we had that many Africans until Black Panther came out. Then I'm like, it's a lot of you guys. Yeah. Like, I, didn't even really, I was really blending in. I thought we was all, nah, we, okay. Man, I remember a story where my dad, he picked me up from school and all my friends was outside and he was playing like, you know, some like African stuff. And I, I, I went in the car and I was like, dad, turn it down. <laughs> Cause they would, because they used to be on my head. Cause I, I would, and the thing is I would go into school and tell people I was Liberian. But when I would, they'll be like, ah, wah, wah, hit me with the African Aww. booty scratch and stuff. So then I would just be more reserved on it. So when my dad pulled up, I was like, yo, dad, turn it down. You Relax. Know? Yeah. Not, not here, not now. You know what I'm saying? So as I got older, I just was like, why I run away from who I am? You Word. know what I mean? And just me being more confident in myself, I was like, man, I got to embrace all sides of me. So that's why I wanted to pour it into the music. But your dad mad when you asked him to do that? Yeah, he make fun <laughs> of it to this day. More? Yeah, he bring it up every day. Like, all the time when we talk about it, he's like, it's funny you embrace yourself. Now, I remember when you was like 13, and I came around your friends, and you was telling me to turn it down. And I, I am embarrassed that I did that, but, you know, kids, you was, kids was cruel. You know what I'm saying? So, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually funny. I feel like... um I, I'll i leave it be. But you, did you see that Burner Boy sold out show 40,000 people in New Zealand and didn't show up? Word. So I say this to say, you know, it's CP time and then there's African time. The Which same, one do it's you the same be thing. Nah, nah. African <laughs> time is a little extreme. I went to Afro Nation in mm-hmm. Africa. It was like, yeah. Who was I? I was going to see. I wanted to see Asaka and I wanted to see Burner Boy. Yeah. So his set time was like 10. So he's like, yeah, don't leave your hotel till 10. I'm like, damn, don't leave till 10. They're like, yeah, it's... I ain't gonna lie, African people do be late. Yeah. Like, we, <laughs> like, for example, like, we gonna have a party, let's say, and and this is another thing that's facts, and I feel like all my African people can relate to this. It can be a kid graduating from high school. They gonna turn it into an adult party. That thing will be lit until 4 o'clock. I promise you. That's beastie. You, and, but... It would be like, for example, for me, like my dad, he was like, yeah, you know, my your sister's uh, graduation party starts at five. That thing ain't start till about seven. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I understand it's where different. you're coming from. It's yeah. a little different. <laughs> but they're going to party all through the night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I'm learning. I'm learning about different cultures and like different parties. It's just, it's very different. <laughs> but so, but growing up in Carolina, like when I moved here, it was a culture shock because at parties, they're playing straight, like, hours of Afrobeats, yeah. hours of soca, Afro, yeah. like, hours of reggaeton. Right. What are they playing? At, at the parties in... In Carolina. Man, they... I mean, the, the college parties and, like, the regular high school parties, they, you might get a little couple reggae songs in there, like, the popular ones, but, like... You know, they playing the, the R&B classics. They playing the, the trap stuff. So it's not you know? like that, right? Yeah, but 
when I do do like like I said, if my dad's having a party, somebody African's having a party, they playing all of that. They gonna play all the Afrobeat stuff. Is they there gonna... a lot of Africans in Carolina? Yes. Really? Yes. Well, it, a Liberians, but I come from a big family. Like my mm. grandma butchered me. Oh my, if you did, don't don't butcher me. But she got like I think she got thirteen kids. Mm. So a lot of us was lived in Charlotte. Some live in Philly. Some live in Minnesota. But not even just that, I think the Liberian community in Charlotte is big. Like, not even just my cousins, but, like, just in general. So it's, like, a whole tribe of us. And, you know, all of our parents live there. And then all of us, we grew up the same age and stuff like that. And then, and then my, my, my dad might have married, you know what I'm saying, your auntie. You know what I'm saying? So now we cousins. So even I have a whole group chat in my phone with a lot of lot young Liberians called tribe, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And we just all, like, we cousins, but we, we all might not be blood, but we might be blood by marriage yeah. and stuff like that. So it's a big community That's in, pretty dope. in Charlotte for sure. There was this article going around that said, like, African Americans or black people make up 8% of the population. I think I told you this yeah. before. And then out of that, like, Pretty much, like, African Americans are no longer the majority of the black people. Like, mm. it's going to grow and it's going to be, like, Africans, yeah. uh, Caribbeans, like, not like not people with slave descendants. Right. And I'm like, in my mind, it kind of made me nervous just for hip-hop because it's like, damn, well, if we're not here to pass the torch, it's just going to look completely different. So that's why I think, though, like, your Afrobeat and Fuse shit is cool because... Like, it's not neglecting the culture. It's, like, right. expanding it. And here's the kill. What you saying, the, the slave descendant thing, I come from both. But it's because on my dad's side, well, on my mom's side, she, she was full, like, like, full African. Didn't have no, like, direct, like, slaves come here. But my dad, my great-grandfather, which my grandma calls me by, like, even on my Instagram, if you look on my title, my Instagram, like, I, I said Seth Lincoln, but that's because that was his name. But... Uh-huh. He, and she always, she don't call me, my grandma don't call me by Ruben. Like, she when she called me, she'd be like, Seth Lincoln, Vincent? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, he was he was born in Barbados, then during the slave trade, sent to Virginia. Then when they freed the slaves, they sent him to Liberia. And that's where my dad's side of the family starts. They sent him to Liberia, or he voluntarily went to Liberia? Probably voluntarily. I'm just yeah. not I, I don't know fully okay, the story, okay, okay. but he probably did. He probably, you know what I'm saying? So... That's where my lineage of my dad's side of the family starts. You know what I'm saying? It was like we had a slave descendant. Then he went back, and then the rest of them are, you know, from Liberia. And then my dad came here and then met my mom. And then on my mom's side, it's just straight, fully. She's the, one of the first to come here. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, And she came here when she was 15 years old. But that was because her dad was, he fought in the in the Liberian Civil War in the 90s. And he didn't want her to be caught Pardon. up in the war stuff. So he made sure she was sent to live with uh, her aunt in, in 89, right before the war had started. So. We are some complex people. Yeah. I love it, though. Yeah, it's, it's, it's real. So it's like, that's why what even makes, like you said, the hip-hop thing, I think, kind of beautiful for me because I am able to go to Africa, but, like, because I'm from here and then also having the history that I have on my dad's side, I'm able to infuse the hip-hop yeah. in there. Fire. So I haven't seen you since Love is War dropped. Mm. Well, yeah, no, I haven't. Well, I haven't. Dreamville. Well, I've seen you, but I haven't sat down with you since Love is Facts. War dropped. And this was a phenomenal project. Thank you. Very proud of you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to get into a few of my favorites. Bottle Service featuring Reason and Stacy. Mm-hmm. Okay. The record is sad. Yeah, but it feels good. But it's sad. Yeah. That, that's the problem. It's like, dang, why am I? But it's sad. So, right. like, what was the inspo behind this? Is this something that you really lived? Yes and no. Okay. So, my my when I say, and I always clarify that because my real father, my biological father, he was not a drinker. Okay. But my stepfather was. Ah. And you, or my mom's ex-husband. Yeah. And, you know, he was very, like, he'd come home, he'd be tell me to go get a bottle from the, from the fridge, and he'd drink a lot. So I did see how that affected our family. But then it also comes from stories of my friends telling me their fathers are the alcoholics yeah. or one of somebody in their family was an alcoholic. So it is something I lived, but then to a certain extent, I also took from other people's experiences too. Um, but... It's funny you say that because the song is sad, and that's something I kind of like. 
I had to realize, like, after levels where I was like, man, I'm being super deep. Like, you know, and I'm nothing's wrong with <laughs> nothing it. Nothing wrong but with that at all. It's like, I, I, which I did, the reason why I did love Bottle Service is because even when I played it during my album listening uh, party in Charlotte, everybody was hearing it for the first time and everybody's dancing. People getting drunk to it. What? But they not... But not I, hearing exact, it. but yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. goal. I want okay. you to feel so good about the music that when you finally get to sit and listen to it, you like, hold up. This is what he was saying the whole time. Yeah, yeah, because the hook is mad catchy, like bottle for my people. Like it's, I can see the the dance part. Yeah, but once you hear it, it's like, oh wait a minute, damn. It make you think. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Does that change your relationship, like growing up and, and witnessing that? Does that change your relationship with liquor at all? Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, everybody knows I don't, I don't drink, and everybody be like, "Why? Why don't you drink?" And I'll be like, "I just, it just from my personal experience that I'm just like, you know, it's not me." And also too, I think that stems from my mother. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? My mother is a very like even when like we was when we was building off camera, like you know, when I was telling you about my like my diet and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. like. That comes from my mom. Like, my mom has all, like, and I live, like, I never, I used to go to my dad's on the weekends, and my dad's a little bit more laid back and chill. Like, you know what I'm saying? When he was younger, eat whatever, you know what I'm saying? He might take a drink here and there, but I lived with my mom, and she was very, 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 like, disciplined. Like, she's like, I don't eat these type of things. I don't drink. I don't smoke, da, da, da. So I think I get that from her, just seeing her be that way. And on top of that, her tribe is crew. Uh, which is one of the Liberian tribes. And if you, like, read up on tr uh, Crew Tribe, they're very resistant, they're very disciplined, and they're very spiritual. Mm. So I, I think I, I reaped in a lot of that just from being in that house. Genetics. Yeah. Genetics. I, I will say something that, because growing up I had a lot of Caribbean friends and, like, African friends. And one had pointed out to me and was like, you're my only African-American friend. And I was like... That's weird. It's like, yeah, I never had a friend like you. And what she said is, but you're the only one I've met who kind of has, like, similar values. Right. And I was like, damn, I, I really didn't like that. But what I was going to say to the point of what you said about your mom is, like, just having a moral code. Right. Not a lot of people have a moral code. All right. So did you, like, were you always following your mother's thing? No. Or did you bump your head a lot and yeah, then was like, definitely bump my I head see a why lot. you do this. Definitely bump my head a yeah. lot. And she used to try, she used to tell me all the time, like, Oh, then I'll be like, oh, man, like, because I'm young and I want to experience things and I want to, you know, do things. And yeah. like, I love my mother and I just admire her discipline to the point where when I did start bumping my head, I was like, all right, I got it. Like, I wasn't always, oh, I don't drink. Oh, I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to dibble and dabble, but it's like. I got to a point where I was like, yo, I'm kind of wildin'. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, let me, let me scale back. And you know, it just, as I've gotten older and I think, you choose, people don't understand this. People say they don't choose the life that they have, but you do choose, your soul did choose your parents. So it's like, huh? your soul choose, you, you, you might not recognize it or realize it, but everything, everything that happens to you is for you. So I feel like okay. you having to eat, no matter what type of dynamic you're, it's some, it's a, it's a silver lining in why you have certain parents. And for me, I feel like my mom, I was a little bit more like, I don't care. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. You know what I'm saying? When I was younger, just being real. And my mother was always that person that kind of, you know, kept me in check and, you know, always taught me about discipline and always taught me about like staying tapped in with God. And I think that has served me so much in my career because we, we in an industry where it's like, you can get caught up in a whole bunch of stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, just my mom having that moral code, I think I've carried that into my career and why I stand on moral code now because I am going to be one of the greatest. That's just that's just how I feel. So it's like in order to be great, you have to have certain routines and things locked down. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I, I just look at certain certain greats in the game and I'm like, I know you're not wilding out every day. You know what I mean? So I feel like I had the mother I had to keep me on the path of like, you know, stick to the moral code. And, you know, I don't judge anybody for doing what they don't want to do, but my mom tells me this all the time. You have your own destiny and everybody else got a different destiny. So you can't walk in everybody else's destiny. And it's just my destiny was had to live with my mother. Like there was a reason I didn't live with my dad. And that's not to shade my dad because my dad's an incredible person. He's a hustler. He was super fly when he was young, and I get that from him. Like, just me being fly and stuff, that's my father used to put me on game on that. But I had to live with my mother to give me that 
moral compass. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Understood. I like it. Um, one of my favorite ones on there is Time Flies, mm-hmm. the Janet sample. Mm-hmm. What made you do that? You was in your, in your Saturday morning bag and was like, you know what? <laughs> I think I need to sample this. That actually was Knife's idea. So I okay. actually pulled up to the studio and Knife had, he was like, yo, I got the, uh, you know, the session for the Janet Jackson Funny How Time Flies. And he was playing with it. And we just in there, you know, chilling, vibing. I'm not even thinking nothing of it. And he just starts in the Pro 2 session, cooking the beat up, like taking the drums from this part and doing this and doing this. And, and he was like, yo, what you going to do? And I was like, all right. And I had already been in the, like, if the, the song comes from, it's not a true story, but it comes from inspired by, uh, not, you know, late night park conversations, you know what I'm saying? You pull up on a shorty or whatever. And it's funny that I actually did have a similar experience to Time Flies after it came out, mm. which is funny, but it was inspired by another situation. So, you, you know, know what? Next time, can you write a song about me making a million dollars so I can actually experience that? Yeah, you know, like yeah. Manifesting. Yeah, facts. I got you. Say, <laughs> shoot, I'm about to manifest that for myself in the next project, for real. But, nah, like, so, you know, I was just feeling the vibe of, like, yeah, like, you know, I, I've, I've been in those late night park conversations with the girl where the time do fly. Yeah. I've had moments where it's like I might pull up on her at 12 and then we in the car talking and doing whatever we doing and it end up being four o'clock. So it just when when you saying funny how time flies, that's what it took me to. So love that. And I want to talk about tricking with Damani because you start you let with butterfly doors and tricking yeah. as the singles. But I seen y'all got a group chat. Yeah, the verse of days is me, him, Chris Patrick, Deontay Hitchcock, and Ray Vaughn. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Y'all all over the place, actually. Yeah, facts. <laughs> Carry all grounds. But, nah, it's fire. And it's, we actually did, this is not the first time we did verse of days. Like, I did verse of days with just Deontay Hitchcock and Chris Patrick, like, a couple years ago. And then I had did one with Nico Brim for a little bit. But then Damani had hit me, and he was like, yo, me and Deontay was talking about doing the verse of days again. You down? And I was like, hell yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it, like, it's always made my pen sharper. And then me having my relationship with Chris Patrick, I was I hit him and I was like, yo, you trying to hop in the chat? He's like, yeah. Then Damani, one time we was on live and Ray Vaughn hopped in. So, it was like, yo, we should add Ray Vaughn in the chat. And now it's just a whole peer group conglomerate and we just be in there sparring. whole bunch of dialects. Yeah. whole, whole bunch of accents going on. <laughs> facts, facts. You got the West Coast, you got the South. Yeah. Um, you got New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's all over the place, but, you know, still sharp and still in. I'll hear something that one of them did and I'll be like, dang, I gotta go crazy today. So I, it's been bouncing off. I really like that. I'm excited to see that. I know right now we're in a woman-dominated rap game. Yeah. So, but I see all y'all and I know all y'all. So that's why it's like, I, I can't wait to see like the submergence or just like when it's, if we ever get to the point where it's not like a, it has to be women, it has to be yeah. male. It's just good rap. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if we're going to get there because we just always like to label things. But and competition yeah. is always a factor. But hopefully soon. And my last question that I'm going to pivot because I want to play a game with you. Geechee Suede. Now, a lot of people probably don't know what Geechee is. Right. And I also thought, like, Geechee was a South Carolina thing. Yeah, facts. It is. Yeah, facts. Oh, okay, okay. So, but the definition of it is, like, the reason why South Carolina people do say that is a lot of them were descendants of West African slaves. Mm-hmm. And that's where it comes from. So, me being a descendant of a West African slave, I was like, you know, I'm going to take that. And then also playing on the name of, a lot of people don't know, well, if you know, you know, it's a, a legendary hip-hop group from the 90s named Camp Low. And one of the uh, persons in, the, I'm one of the people in the group name was Geechee Sway. So I was like, oh, Geechee, Geechee Sway. And I was like, and Geechee Sway just sound like some player, some player stuff. So, that could just fly. Yeah, so it I was is. like, I'm going to name it Geechee Sway. You know what I mean? So that was me kind of just showing the old to West Africa and then also my Carolina roots. And, you know, though I'm not from South Carolina, yeah, North yeah. Carolina, South Carolina. Is, cousins. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. I was just trying to bridge the gap on that. And, you know, it everything, I, I everything is strategic, I feel like, for me. You know what I'm saying? So even if it's a little bit... I'm putting the little the little Easter eggs in whatever I do. Fire. One last thing before I get into the game. We're playing two games. Yeah. One's fill in the blank. Okay. It's pretty simple. And then the other one's a Hip Hop 50 trivia. If you win, we have a prize for you. Oh, snap. Okay. But your Cosmic Kev Freestyle 
stupid. Hey. So yeah. stupid. I yeah. was like, I, I had to keep rewinding it to just really listen and understand what you were saying. <laughs> Seriously. Hey. You wrote, that on, you wrote that the day before? Like, how yeah, was that? Yeah, yeah. facts. And okay, so, okay. so Cosmic, he had hit me, and he was like, like, literally the night before. And it's funny because he had a different beat for me. Mm. But I, I was like, that it wasn't where I was right now. And it's not, and I don't even like doing that because I, I don't like backing out from a test of a beat. But it just was, the beat was a little bit too fast for me. Mm. And I just wasn't in that pocket. So, literally, I actually got that beat that morning. And I was flying into New York. My manager can attest. It's like, it was, I was on the train and I'm just in my headphones trying to get this verse right. I'm like, bro, I hope I memorize it. I hope I memorize it. Like, so I had wrote all of that, the, like the, the morning of, and we went in there and then, you know, I executed. One take? Yeah. Really? Facts. One take, Rue. Facts. Love that. Niggas do not be one take. Come on, You was man. behind the scenes of that TV show. Yeah. Niggas was not one take. That was, yo, that was a nightmare. <laughs> Hey. No comment. <laughs> no comment. We'll leave it at that. I one took. You were one take. Yeah, yeah. You were one take. I, I, want, I try to one take every freestyle I do. That if I don't, it, it's probably because I didn't uh, enunciate my words the right way or whatever. So it's like I, I'm gonna do it again. But for the most time, I try to one take. That's rough. Yeah. I, I don't even know if we're gonna get back to a culture that like cares about that. But yeah. I definitely appreciate it, especially because I had to sit there the whole time and kept restarting the <laughs> instrumental for niggas to. No, they own raps. Crazy. All right, let's play fill in the blank. The older I get, the less I blank. The older I get, the less I care about other people's opinions. I can't believe I actually blanked when I was younger. Mm. He said, told my dad to turn down the fucking music. That, <laughs> and, hmm. I can't believe I asked her so much. I'm just trying to think of what I know. <laughs> Nothing bad, but it's like I was about to say like an embarrassing story, but that that's like I was like a kid, so I don't. Okay, know I got there. another question that should get to the embarrassing story if you don't. Want to okay, so <laughs> say the say the blank again. I can't believe I actually blanked when I was younger. I can't believe I used to fight a lot. What? Yeah. No. Yeah. So I can't. I like looking back. I'm like, dang. I I used to be like a little bad kid. Yeah. I, I got mean, suspended mad times at school for fighting. But it would be, it wasn't like, you know what we was talking about off air about the, like, the, the comment? Uh, or, uh, so uh, it would be like, I would come, like, I would, whether it's on the bus or I come in class, and just me being myself, people will feel a certain way and start trying to poke at me. Uh, and I would be quiet, quiet, quiet until you keep poking. And then now, I'll, now we got to fight. Up. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not mad at that. It's actually sad how the world will try to take your confidence every step of the way. Bro. Like, so I, I always salute confident people because you have to be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a battle. I'm a little embarrassed by the fact that I know so little about blank. Mm. Mm. I'm a little embarrassed that I know so little about, honestly, like investment portfolios and real estate stuff. Like I, I've yet to dive so How old are you? <laughs> like I mean, but I want to get my bag right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to get my... You I know love what I'm it. I, I love it. Don't let him pick the dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you said don't let me pick the dinner? Yeah, take the money. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm going to take the money. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I was Keep gonna it right nation. He already got that dinner. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was going to take the money in the first I place. That. I know that, but I just... Making sure we all the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but not not even like I'm in, like, it's just because I want to learn. It's not that I don't know a lot, but I want to learn so much more about it. And I want to really, like, that's one thing. I, I want to be really wealthy. So it's like a side of, so it's like, that's something I'm embarrassed. I really don't, I haven't dived into yet, especially with money I've acclimated. Yeah. And I, I'm, I've, I've made some not bad money mistakes. Like, I still manage my money well, but, like, I just looking back, I wish I, you know, invested more. You feel me? Understood. <laughs> look, I understand. All right. Sometimes I look back at my life and blank. Sometimes I look back at my life and be like, damn, I was right. Mm. Okay. From time to time, it's good to blank. From time to time, it's good to decompress. Cut, cut the social media off. You know what I'm saying? Get your mind right. I'm, I'm a big meditator, so, you know, I just... 
I'll, sometimes I'll, I'll just be like, I ain't on social media for a little bit. Get off of there and just be to myself. You know what I'm saying? You hate be, that, huh? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does because I don't like social media sometimes. I, I get it. I made a complete fool of myself when I blinked. You made a what? Complete fool of myself when I blinked. When I was seven years old, we was on the way to Disney World <laughs> in the car. Okay. And I had food poisoning. Oh. And I was like, Mom, can you roll the windows down? I just need to pass gas. And she was like, all right. And because at first I was like, I need to use the bathroom. And then she was like, wait, we we a couple exits down from the gas station. We, we're not at an exit yet. You're going to take, it's going to take a little bit. So I was like, all right, bet. And I was like, you know what? I think I just got to pass gas. Roll the windows down. <laughs> and the pass gas was not gas. <gasps> It was oh, a whole lot of shit in the ass. Oh my god! <laughs> and, uh, you sharted. Yeah, it was bad, bro. It was bad. <laughs> it was bad. And this was around the time, like, I was just getting to like clothes and stuff. I was still young, but my cousins had put me on clothes. So I had yeah. got these jeans that was super fire, and I was feeling myself. We on the way to Disney World. That's hilarious. And yeah, it, I had to throw them jeans away. Ah, oh, that bad. sucked. It was bad. But you did the right thing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You did the right thing. <laughs> it was bad. We had to stop at the gas station. I'm running the gas station, holding my behind and stuff Damn. like that. It was it was bad, bro. Yo, parent, I have a story like that, too. I ain't sharp myself, but... Well, actually, I have a few of just holding my pee. <laughs> I have some child ones and some recent year ones that I will not go into, but I feel mm. you. Um, <laughs> an ideal world would be blank, like for you. An ideal world, I would have some land in America, in Africa. Um, I'll be chilling. I'll, I'll have, like, you know, growing fruits and stuff like that and be on some, like, have my studio, you know, making music, being one of the greatest artists in the world and just rich. Got a 20, 20 M's. I feel that. That's all I need. I can turn that into 40, 60, 80. You know what I'm saying? That's my perfect world. And just... All my, not even just me, because that's that's a very selfish answer. I want to make sure my whole family is good too. You yeah, know what I'm saying so. It was funny. We do all of this, you know. We build studios. We go on tours. We do all of this just for like peace. Yes. Just for like some land and some fruit. You know. Yeah, what I mean? exactly. <laughs> like I'm doing all this work just to at the end be like, yeah, just give me a house. Let me grow my fruits. Let me be with my family and, and just be it. laid back. I really don't care about. The world, like, I mean, I do care about the world. Let me not say that. That sounds crazy. But I don't, I'm not searching for anything. You don't I, care about the worldly, like. Yeah, yeah, the worldly things. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I'm not searching for anything. I, I think I know where I want to go. My personality trait is blank. My personality trait is. It's two things. Because I feel like people get the deep side of me, but I be lit, too. I'm goofy as hell, but it's like everybody don't everybody don't get that side. They just get the introspective. So I, I would just say goofy slash deep. You know what I'm saying? You had to pick. I was gonna say confidence. Yeah, gonna that say too. What? Confidence. Confidence. Yeah, I, my personality trait is confidence. Definitely. I like that. And and that's something that I, I think you know. I try to like you know. I want y- that. I want young black black people in general, but especially young black men, like I want them to see from me, no matter what size you are, no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, you don't have to live a certain life to be be confident in who you are. And I think, you know, me just walking in every room like that, I'm representing for the kid who wasn't necessarily confident in himself. Cause I wasn't always this confident. I feel like I was, then I got it beat down and I was like, uh, I'm not going to show nobody. And then I was like, you know what? F that I'm about to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I just want people to live in that, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been in a place where I hid the confidence that I had in myself to, you know, please other people or dim my light to, you know, make others shine brighter. And it's not a good feeling. Man, I've done the same thing. And I feel like I've recently just got out of it. Yeah. When I said recently, I mean like six months ago. I feel you. Yeah. I feel <laughs> like, you. It's a, it's a, it's a, like healing, bro, is a journey. You know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like to get to that point. And then have to rebuild yourself up, it takes a lot of time. And I had to do a lot of self-work to get back to where it's at. Yeah. And I, I want to say, just as, like, 
shout out to Charlemagne, but like working as like a female in the entertainment space and like the rooms that I would be in as like the only girl, like I would say ideas. They would act like they didn't hear my ideas, take my ideas to the point where I would just feel like. What's the point of right. me, like, being here? But, like, people like Charlemagne, like, see me, let me know he sees me and right. he hears me and then actually, like, empowers me to execute. Right. So, like, but he has helped me definitely tremendously build up my confidence. So that's why I got to say salute to him. And now it's like, I'm not going to stop talking. Like, Man, actually, exactly. I, I feel like this, 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 this. Exactly, this. exactly. Yeah. And that's, shout out to all the, to all the black men that embrace our sisters, man, because even me just having conversations with, my sisters, my friends, like, it's so much y'all endear. And it's like, we're not, the strongest thing a black man, there's two things uh, uh, that the most powerful thing a black man can do is raise a family and protect his his, his women. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think, you know, more than ever, that's, those are, not now, but like in the future, I mean, for the, for the women part, to this day but the family that's down the line but those are things that I think about you know what I'm saying like those are two of the most powerful things I think black men can do agree yeah I love that all right so this segment is called just kicking it just kicking <laughs> just kicking right that's we gotta use that <laughs> we gotta use that but um someone told me that I look like I throw a great game night you give me like a game night vibe game give, night vibe yeah like you give me like fun vibe oh okay yeah. alright fun sounds better like, game like, night sounds mad cheesy I'm like nah nah <laughs> like like drinks and game night so I'm like hmm you know what I think I'm gonna start doing more games let's do it so this is in honor of hip hop if so it's hip hop trivia. Oh boy! And you should know this. If you if you get these wrong, I'll be disappointed. Me too. But I'm a, I'm gonna give you. Should we do five or ten? Five. All right. So if you get most of them right, okay, you will win a pair of shoes. Word. So I like shoes. I can't play. Hold on. Let me sit up. <laughs> Sneakers is my thing. Yes. If you guys aren't familiar with Woodstack, by the way, they are a Brooklyn-based shoe store. They're super fire. Outside of having sneakers, they have, and they're black owned. Outside of having sneakers, they got really dope pants. They even got Paper Planes merch. They got oh, all wow. types of stuff. So if you guys haven't tapped in with them already, if you're NYC, definitely stop by. Hey. I actually got these, you know, from there. All right. Wow. Yeah. I'm nervous, but I like shoes, so I got to get, let's get money. All right. Which hip-hop group produced the song, Ooh La La Song? In tune, the boys, perfect gentlemen, or Migos. In tune, I don't. I'm gonna be real. I don't know this one. Okay, it's perfect gentlemen. We'll go to the next. Which hip hop singer released the album titled Ghetto D? Oh, Master P, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Which of the following hip hop singers is not a member of? Singers, which of the following hip hop members is not a member of the Wu Tang Clan? ODB, Jizza, Redman, Method Man. Redman. Man, I thought that was gonna trick you. Okay, which year did it? Nah, I don't want to do that one. Which artist released the All Eyes on Me album? Pop. Come on, man. <laughs> he said, "Don't play with me." Uh, where did hip hop originate from? It started out in the Bronx. All right, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I know the day, but I can't think of it right now. <laughs> That's the part of the, that was the part of the question? <laughs> Don't do me like that, Carl. I got it right. <laughs> I can't think of it right now, but. All right. I, that was just his question. Okay, okay, you know, okay. I just can't remember off the top that. of my head. Um. By the way, you've already answered uh, four correct, so out of the five, you okay. already won. But I'm just going to ask you these because okay. it's fun. Uh, who is not a member of the Fuji's hip hop group? Proz, Meth Man, Meth Man. Uh, which was the first album of Jay Z? Watch the Throne. Reasonable Doubt. Ah, all right. <laughs> uh, which hip hop singer is famously referred to as the queen of hip hop soul? Mary J. Blige. Which artist has won the most Grammy Awards for Best Rap Album? What's the names? 
Nas, Eminem, Kendrick Lamar, Drake. It's between Kate I am. It's Kate I, right? Mm. Ah, nah, okay, okay. I was close. It's, yeah, you were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um which year did Kanye West release the college dropout? Oh, 2004. Come on. All right, all right. Who is not a member of the G-Unit group? Lloyd Bakes, Tony Ayo, 50 Cent, Eminem. Eminem. Whoever made this loves Eminem. It's, it's Which right. hip-hop singer was shot in Las Vegas in 1996? Pac. <laughs> all right. Who released the hip-hop album titled Country Grammar? Um, Nelly. All right, all right. You overachieved, actually. <laughs> <laughs> that ooh la one got me. I ain't going to hold you. I ain't, I ain't know who the, the, them. I, no disrespect to them, but I just ain't know those names. All good. All right, so we're gifting We you get win. shoes. We get yes. shoes. We get shoes. We get shoes. And they new balances. Don't play with them. Oh, that's what a size got? 10. I wear a size 10 now. Don't, I saw that Jordan. Nah, nah, I know you're a 10, so you just take, take your pick. Take your pick. Y'all about to make me cry in this mug. Y'all about to make me cry in this mug. Oh, man. Oh, man, y'all. Dang. Y'all gonna make this hard. Y'all don't know how much I love shoes. Like, I've, I mean, I feel like hip-hop and sneakerheads is like they're married. Mm, okay. Okay, we got... Dang. Those ain't even drop yet. Word? Yeah. Not like... Shh. I'm debating. <laughs> Dang. Y'all know the name of this colorway? Yeah, it's Crimson. Oh, Crimson. Okay, fire, fire, fire. I'm a sneakerhead. Like, uh, I used to sell sneakers in high school, so, like, <laughs> this is... This is Y'all, y'all, y'all blessing me right now. No funny. I love this. Come on, Rue. Pick a shoe. We don't have pick all a shoe. day. Oh, all right. I'm going with the New Balance. You going with the New Balance? Yeah. Wow. Cause I got, I got, a, I, I get, I got a lot of Jordans. Okay. I, I rock a lot of Jordans, and I ain't go a lot of New Balances. These is crazy. These is fire. So I'm definitely about to rock these for sure. Just real quick, give a shout out to Woodstack. Shout out to Woodstack, man. Y'all got some heat. I'm about to pull up on y'all in BK. No funny. Um, no kizzy, no cap, no rap in my cap. But these right here is crazy. I appreciate y'all because I'm a real sneakerhead. And I don't play about shoes. They gave me a water, too? Oh, wait. That's somebody that, water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. That was... <laughs> sorry, that, sorry, that wasn't supposed to be in there. But good. shout out to Woodstack uh, for sponsoring the game. Shout out to y'all, man. Just kicking it. Ruben, thank you so much for stopping by and kicking it with me. Yes, thank you. You already know we you already know we locked in. We got think we gotta think of a handshake. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Not on not on camera. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> but shout out to your Instagram, let everybody know where they can follow you and tap in with Ruben Vincent. Yeah, follow the boy Ruben Vincent, R E U B N V I N C N T on Instagram. Same thing on Twitter with an underscore. They got me on TikTok. So <laughs> Ruben Vincent with an underscore. New music is coming soon. Humble Beast is out now. Love is War is out now. Oh, I forgot Humble Beast is out. Fire. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Woodstack again for giving me the kicks. Yes. You know what I mean? Third World, we in the we in the house. You know what I'm saying? Third World business. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? We vibing. Love that. Good. Ruben, you know I'm a big fan. I'm Gangaroo. Like, I'm like a, a really big fan. Gangaroo. Yeah. I always tell you this. But anyway, <laughs> thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of We Need to Talk. If you guys haven't already, make sure you like, share, subscribe, do all that. And again, shout out to Woodstack NYC. Check them out. Boop. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that lovely conversation. You already know We Need to Talk for all your exclusive interviews with your favorite artists, celebrities, influencers, etc. Now, if you guys haven't already, make sure you drop a comment. Show me some love. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. I'm open to criticism. And also, please, whatever you do, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on the latest content that drops when it drops.